Ockham Biologist. This session we're going to take a look at the protein structure. It's very, very popular on the exam list and as you can see it's an integral point of OCR and also AQA specification. First thing we need to know is the general structure of an amino acid. Now quite common on, common on the exam is that it allows you to describe the structure of an amino acid. Now the best way to describe it is to draw it. So draw something that looks like this but it is really important that you label it in the drawing. Um, now one thing to note here is, is this R group. Now an R group is a side chain of the amino acid. Now there are 20 amino acids in total. You don't need to know the structure of all 20 amino acids, but what you do need to know is that this R group changes between the different amino acids. I'm going to show you some examples now. So as you can see, for example, this one here, glycine, the R group and glycine is just a hydrogen. Whereas if I look at alanine, for example, the R group and alanine is CH3. And as you can see, all these different amino acids have different R groups. And these different R groups give them different properties. So, for example, this group here, they have positively charged R groups. So they give them a, a positive charge. Whereas here we have negatively charged R groups. So between these two different R groups, I can actually create an ionic bond. And that becomes very, very important when we look at protein structure a little bit more. The next thing we need to be aware of is that a dipeptide can form. So di means two. A dipeptide is two amino acids joining together to form a dipeptide. Now, obviously, when two monomers join together um, in a condensation reaction, water is removed. So again, this is very, very popular on the mark scheme to draw. As you can see here in the red box, that's what's taken away from my amino acids to form the water and anything that's popping up in a red box now you must make sure that you uh, annotate a drawing with these two really important things there in the dark red box when asked to describe the structure of a dipeptide you must label the peptide bond and you must make sure you state that water has been removed or plus h2o or something like that so the examiner can see that you know water is removed in the process of creating a dipeptide and yes you do need to know this formula off by heart here they put um two glycines but you you just put the r groups there just put r for r groups instead of a h or whatever is given to you in the exam to draw now there are four structures of, an, of um, a protein you need to be aware of the bits in the red box here are taken directly from the mark scheme so we just looked at how to form a dipeptide um, if I was to break up that dipeptide, it would be a hydrolysis reaction by adding back in the water. But for a primary structure, what I'm going to be doing is more condensation reactions, removing more water and adding more amino acids to make a polypeptide. Poly means several joined together. And here I have a polypeptide, so several amino acids which are joined by peptide bonds. The next structure is a secondary structure, and this is folding of the polypeptide chain, and this is held in place by hydrogen bonds. So as you may remember, hydrogen bonds form between a slightly positive hydrogen and a slightly negative oxygen. And these will be found within the R groups of my amino acids. So I've got hydrogen bonds here between the R groups in my amino acids. Now there are two kinds of structures that can form here. We've got alpha helixes or beta pleated sheets that can form as a result of in these secondary structures. The next one is the tertiary structure. Uh, I've already had folding in my secondary structure, so I've got further folding now in my tertiary structure. And this is held in place by hydrogen bonds, as I mentioned before, between a slightly positive hydrogen and a slightly negative oxygen of different R groups. I've got disulfide bridges, which occur between two sulfurs in different amino acids in different R groups. And these only occur between cysteines. Uh, amino acids. I've also got ionic bonds forming, so a pos between a positive R group and a negative R group of different amino acids. And I've also got hydrophobic R groups and hydrophilic R groups. So any hydrophobic R groups will orientate towards the centre of my protein and any hydrophilic R groups will orientate towards the outside of my protein. The last one is a quaternary structure, and this is where I've got more than one polypeptide chain, such as haemoglobin that has four different uh, polypeptide chains. So that's the structure of an amino acid and the different structures of the protein. It's really important to have a think about if my amino acid structure change, what impact would that have on my proteins? So have a think about that and we will cover that in another video a bit later on. Guys, good luck with your exams and all the best.